Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today I wanted to talk about um, an update on uh, gene therapy for limb girdle muscular dystrophy type 2E that was uh, just reported um, this past Monday, uh, June 8th, 2020. And in that, uh, the uh, company that um, is sponsoring the uh, investigational drug, uh, Sarepta Therapeutics, uh, reported a couple of things. Um, so in their clinical trial, they first uh, treated three patients who have uh, LGMD2E with a dosage of 5 times 10 to the 13th um, viruses per kilogram of body weight. And that was done uh, last year and they'd reported uh, how the people, you know, how much uh, of the, the protein that their body wasn't able to make before that they made after receiving the treatment, as well as how they had um, their muscle performance was um, up to nine months after the treatment. So uh, today, or this week, they um, gave an update on them, how they were, do how they were doing between nine months post-treatment and 12 months. And, you know, by and large, they continued to improve. Um, so the major scale that they used for functional performance um, is something called the NSAD, North Star Assessment for Limb Girdle um, uh, Type Dystrophies. And in that, uh, there were three patients. The youngest one actually has maxed out on the scale. So, you know, he can't get a higher score. He, you know, is completely, you know, you know the highest level of function according to that scale. Uh, there's two older patients who aren't quite maxed out, but they uh, both improved their score between nine months and 12 months. Uh, there were a few other tests that they did um, with all of the patients, and some of the, you know, some of their scores improved a little bit, um, some decreased a little bit. By and large, they seem to be um, improving somewhat, you know, or at least holding their own. And so that's, that's good. That's, um, that's what you hope. And, you know, really the NSAD scale is kind of the most definitive and the fact that everyone was either maxed out or continued to improve is uh, a very good sign. Okay, so the second um, thing that was reported was they treated three more patients at a dosage of 2 times 10 to the 14th, which is four times higher than what the first three patients received. Uh, there isn't functional result, there aren't functional results for that yet, uh, because it hasn't been long enough um, since they were treated. I think the last uh, person was treated either in January or February of this year. But um, the, uh, they have uh, protein expression data. And they do the protein expression data a few different ways. Uh, one is to look at just the total amount of this protein uh, in the muscle fiber, essentially, it's called uh, a Western blot. You just, you know, take a sample, grind up the muscle, and then, you know, see how much uh, protein you have, you know, relative to a, you know, healthy, you know, control sample of someone who doesn't have muscular dystrophy, um, and basically, per that readout. Uh, in the first cohort of, of people with a four times lower dose, uh, on average they were getting about 35% of, you know, what a, you know, healthy person would have of the beta sarcoglycan protein. Uh, for the second group, uh, it went up to about 60%. Now, that isn't actually a huge increase at less than a factor of two, even though they'd gotten four times as much of the dosage. 
but I think what's going on there is that um, it turns out for this particular protein, people who are carriers of the disease, who only have one good copy of the gene, uh, make just as much protein as people who have two good copies. So I think once you get more than one um, copy of the gene into a particular muscle cell nucleus, um, it doesn't actually give you any more um, expression of the protein. And the reason of that, for that, is that this protein uh, is bundled together with several other closely related proteins. There's, you know, four different sarcoglycans that are all bound together in a group. And if you have way more of one of the four, but, you know, the same amount of the other three, uh, you can't make the, the bundle, and so the rest of the protein just sort of gets thrown away. Uh, you know, it's kind of like if you're building a house, you might have, you know, more than you need of different kinds of, you know, nails or lumber or anything else, uh, but you only need a certain amount to construct everything together, and anything beyond that is just excess. You know, having more nails doesn't mean that you're going to, you know, have more nails in your finished house. Um, the other way that they monitored the protein expression is to um, what's called uh, by immunohistochemistry, look at what percentage of muscle fibers in the biopsy were expressing the transferred protein. And that went up um, pretty significantly, about 50% of the fibers roughly um, expressed the protein in the first group with the lower dose, and that went up to about 70% in the higher dose. Um, so a greater percentage of fibers that are expressing the protein, and that's important because fibers that are expressing the protein are likely to survive longer and there's going to be less turnover. Uh, so one of the, the limitations currently with uh, gene therapy is that you can't um, redose somebody. You know, if they kind of are starting to run out of the protein, there's not much you can do. So the other, the other thing is that um, if you're, if a muscle fiber dies and you're building a new one, you know, which it turns out is done by stem cells, uh, it's not 100% clear whether the transfer gene gets to the stem cells or that when the stem cells divide, the daughter cells all express the gene. So really you want to do the gene therapy uh, so that as many of the muscle fibers are making the protein uh, as possible and that you have, you know, more than enough protein, um, you know, just in case you start to run, run out at some lower, at some later point in time. So uh, the good news also is that, you know, there weren't any, you know, more serious side effects uh, or, you know, issues with um, adverse reactions from the treatment um, in the second group relative to the first group. So, you know, there isn't really a safety concern with the higher dose. So the company pretty much said, although not definitively, that they're planning to use the higher dose in, uh, in later trials. Um, you know, which um, makes total sense to me. If I were in their position, that's what I would vote for. So anyway, um, you know, of course, you know, it'll be interesting to see how the patients that uh, got the higher dose are doing going forward and also how the uh, first three patients uh, continue to do you know, at a longer time after their treatment. But, um, you know, it's a good, it's a bit of good news, and uh, I wanted to give a quick video to share all of that with you. So hope you're um, all doing well, and I will see you soon.